Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are back again. My name is the Sobri Boys Walifatsi, together with the last one, uh, uh, Um This morning, we are going to discuss a number of issues, uh, but there's one particular topic that we want to discuss. But let me allow Tsepang to greet you so that we start the show. Tsepang, welcome to the show. May you kindly greet the viewers. Yes, um, good morning to the viewers out there and to you also, Mr. Shabalala. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it's a new week, a lot of news that we have. And yeah, hope everyone is excited for part one of the show. And may everyone stay tuned. Thank you very much. All right. Um, we are going to start a show on a somber note. Uh, you know, we have our father here in Tembisa here. Uh, and I happen to know him very well because the elder son is my friend. And then uh, we also were university mates. All right. Uh, I'm referring to Ndate Kovandrov. Uh, Ndate Kovandrov was the, the president of SANFA, South African National Football Association. Which was, uh, which was the forerunner for Safa, all right? Um, <clears throat> what happened is when there was a split in football, uh, there was an issue whether we are going to continue with Safa or Safa. Then ultimately Safa became the new body that was led by the late and that the sticks Morewa. So that end of was leading uh, Sanfa, all right? So the sad news, he passed on. And this morning, you'll be buried this morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, he used to stay at uh, Sitama section in Tembisa. So uh, those people in the morning, were not aware, probably wants to pay the last respect. Uh, it's happening at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, the service, I think, starts at 10, or they are going to leave at 10 from home in Sitama section. So can we just have a moment of silent tepa uh, in honor of Ndadendorf? All right. Thank you. Um, well, I know him very well. Um, um, like I said already, um, you know, Tembisa history will never be written without mentioning him. It's not only in football. There is a place called multi Purpose in Tembisa. You know it? Yes, 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 I know it. Yeah, and that end of was one of the people who, you know, mobilized the fans from the private sector to build that place. So he has done a lot in Tembisa. And I got to know this via Mr. Lusufi, Panyaza Lusufi, who's also a Tembisa. Uh, when I saw his Facebook page, and then, uh, yeah, so that's when I got to know. And then, but nevertheless, you know, those things uh, happen. Uh, well, he was old already because he had already passed eight years. So may his soul rest in peace and condolences to the family. Tsepa, the news today, the news that we'd like to discuss, um, people have been talking about when are we going to the stadia? I mean, uh, here in South Africa, uh, what is stopping us to go to the stadia? And we see in Europe, uh, you know, I saw... Barcelona over the weekend, uh, the, 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 the stadium has been opened up to 100% capacity. Although they had about 47,000 attendees, uh, but uh, they could have uh, more uh, because now they are allowed. And I saw in, in, in France, uh, the stadiums are in full capacity. In England, the stadium are in full capacity. Uh, we saw what is happening here, even in our country. 
this is the election time. We saw that uh, politicians are going all around and they, they fill up uh, whatever stadium or the venues that wherever they are going. So what's your take uh, about this, Tsepang? I just want to hear your comments as far as uh, this is concerned, all right? Yes, um, first thing first, this is a very concerning matter because um, not just as, a, as fans, but also uh, amongst the clubs also within the DCB Premiership and the rugby also, you know, uh, the rugby association, you know, and the cricket as well, you know, even our netball, like sports in general, because now um, if politicians can fill up venues or stadiums when they're doing their campaigns, and then if entertainment as well is also open, you know, with a capacity of, is it 2,000 people outside, if I'm not mistaken, 1,000 people inside the venue, you know, and other public also gatherings are also open. It doesn't make sense that uh, when it comes to sports that people can't attend stadiums. I, I, I'm failing to understand that point because it's more like the same thing. Sports also, we could classify it also as an entertainment, you know? People want to go there and watch. People want to be entertained. So why when it comes to the sports part that we are not, still not allowed to attend, you know, uh, the games, to go watch uh, sports, you know. So a lot of clubs now are actually frustrated. Um, a lot of club owners were coming through also during the course of the weekend that, no, um, we've got already a, a system intact in place that even in, in a sense of uh, the, 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 the COVID-19 protocols, what should be done and how everything should be, uh, should be run, and you know, uh, all systems are in check. So we already know how to manage uh, this whole pandemic already. So why isn't sports uh, uh, being uh, uh, being uh, not been given yet the green light to allow spectators to go uh, 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 into the stadiums? So that's just something which I, I as a as a as a, as a South African citizen, you know. Um, uh, actually concerned about even other people as well that we really don't understand what's happening what's the hold up uh, in regarding to this matter mm. and i see that john comatis is complaining john comatis is the owner of cape town city complaining that uh, you know they are they are running the risk of being bankrupt now or they don't have money let me put it correctly not say bankrupt uh, they are running the risk of losing a lot of money due to the non-attendance of uh, supporters to the stadium. So, yeah, so we hope that uh, the authorities, I don't know whether it should be, the direction should come from the PSL or it should come from the government. So somebody should lead us. And I hope that the Minister of Sports, uh, Arts and Recreation will also come to the party and give us some light. Or are they waiting for the president to give us a direction. So, yeah, we hope uh, that uh, uh, very soon the stadium will be, will be, will be, you know, open. People will be allowed to go to to the stadiums. So people are hungry. People want to go and to enjoy football. And then uh, we saw all over the part, all over the world now. Uh, we're watching Euro not long ago. Uh, people were allowed. You know, it was full capacity. And then, uh, so why not now? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yes. Yeah. Come in. Yes. Um, so, you know, in regarding to this whole matter, yes, as, you, as you're saying that um, uh, uh, in Europe, um, uh, the, the, the stadiums are open, you know, the stadiums are open. Um, people are people are entering the stadiums. Most stadiums full capacity. Everything is just free flowing. So we 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 actually start questioning ourselves because uh, yesterday I actually saw on the news that uh, in 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 the UK there were forty thousand cases that were being recorded in the past two weeks daily. 
you know, of COVID-19. So now you start questioning yourself that, okay, if that can happen that side, then what about us this side? But yet they are still given the green light that side, you know? So they had more risk clearly than us. So uh, still, the question still remains, still comes back to us that what's the problem? If our politicians can still go to the stadiums and do manifestos and campaign and everything, but they can't allow spectators to go and support their fellow teams. Teams are dying right now. Teams don't have money. Teams are suffering, you know, due to ticket sales and everything that's happening right now. Um, the, 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 the vendors within the stadiums are still suffering. Businesses are still suffering there. So we don't know. Is it a special case when it comes to the sports side of South Africa, what? But it still doesn't make sense. If you can allow entertainment to go on for eight hours, maybe a day uh, to carry on, but just to watch a single soc- uh, just to watch a single soccer game, rugby game or tennis game or netball game, that doesn't take more than five hours. It's a problem. So those are things which are really concerning. They're raising question marks uh, in regards to everyone that what's happening and maybe i don't know the minister of sports should come in uh, come in get involved and just answer us and then so that we can get a clear indication on this all right we just want to hear people out there as the members of the public what's your take on this one uh, are we saying uh, we should allow footballers and all entertainment not only footballers uh, entertainers uh, are they should should they be allowed now uh, to also have free for all, just like it's happening in politics, it's free for all. There is no social distancing. Uh, there is door to door. You don't see people washing their hands every min- every ten minutes or five minutes. Uh, things just go on. So yeah, uh, let's hear your comment. We'll appreciate. Tepang, it was this for now, and thank you very much for your contribution. And I hope that. Uh, our viewers will also make uh, uh, the necessary contribution so that we are able to, uh, you know, to engage as far as this subject is concerned. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. And then uh, I'll continue to ask you to continue to subscribe and like. And also, uh, if there's anything that you're not happy about, just indicate to us. Thank you very much. Sepa, let me hear you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Shabalala, and to the viewers out there. Can't wait for part two of the show. Thank you very much. Thank you.